Okay, welcome to our classic car. Now, I just thought I'd do a quick update on matters garage related. Um, as I talked about a little while ago, the plan this year is to sort of rationalise things a little bit and cut back on vehicles needing lots and lots of restoration and sort of aim things more towards cars that kind of work or nearly work. So, as a result of that, the Morris has gone off to a new home, as did the Talbot a little while before. Uh, and actually, the other part of the plan for this year was to buy something that was a bit more usable a bit more suitable for longer trips in, uh, say if we wanted to go to a show 50-60 miles away. Uh, in the Anglia it would be a bit of a slog, but in something newer, sort of late 60s, early 70s, it would be a lot easier. So to that end, a new arrival has turned up. Now I will introduce it properly in a future video, um, but lately I've been doing work on it to recommission it. It's been off the road for <coughs> two or three years I think now, something like that, so it shouldn't need too much work and it did uh, see some restoration about seven or eight years ago, bodywork, sills, wings, etc. But I'll talk about more in uh, a future video. So, at the moment, the main piece of work that I'm doing is brake related. Uh, it has disc brakes all round, there's a slight clue for you. Um, and one of the rear calipers, three of the four calipers have been replaced already, but one hadn't, This and this one is the replacement that I've just bought for it. The one that was on the car when I bled the brakes up it was just pouring out fluid so clearly the seals were gone and it's probably corroded inside so uh, that's going to go on fairly soon. And another exciting arrival in the post was this package here because the car has some horrible plastic reflective number plates on it which just look terrible on a car of this age. So this week arrived in the post lovely set of proper metal reflective plates for the early 1970s. There's a slight clue that might give you an idea as to the age of this particular car that I'm working on. But like I say, I'll introduce it properly in a future video. So that's that. But today's little task is to replace one of the brake pipes. When I took the pipe off here, when I was doing the caliper, this end, when I was undoing the union, it twisted up the end of the copper pipe there. It, it happens quite often that. I mean, I, I don't like hydraulic brakes, but this car has them, so I've just got to live with it. So the idea is to make up a new hydraulic brake pipe. I've cut a piece to roughly the right length, so I just need to practice my flaring techniques and it get a flare like that on both ends of this new length of copper pipe. So I've not done one for a couple of years, so I'm just going to have to sort of refresh the grey matter a little bit. But let's have a look and see if we can go about making a new brake pipe for this mystery car. Right, okay, well, the plan with this is to have a go at forming a flare, a double flare, on the end of this particular piece of copper brake pipe. Now this is 3 16th pipe, which is pretty common on British cars, certainly, probably most cars of the 50s, 60s, 70s. And I'm led to believe that cleanliness is next to godliness, and cleanliness when dealing with forming uh, brake pipe parts, flares, etc. is a good idea. So to that end I've found a new fresh piece of newspaper to lie on. And let's have a quick look and see what we have to do first. Now this has already been pre-cut and really this has to be as square to the length of pipe as you can get away with, as close as you could possibly can. And the more preparation work you do now, the better the resulting double flare on the brake pipe will be. Now, this has already been cut, this has been pre-cut, so that's all nice and neat. But what you would do is, if you'd just cut that with a pipe cutter or push comes to shove, you could use a little saw like the Junior Hacksaw or something like this. Um, but you need to make sure this is all lovely and smooth and nice before you even think about putting a flare on it. So we will go to our pipe flaring kit. Now, I bought this one years ago. This was just a cheapie off eBay. I have used it before. And there are a few instructions which are taped into the inside here. Uh, and here are the bits and pieces that you need. And we will have a look at those closely. But the first thing to do is make sure that this is nice and flush, square. There's no burrs or anything like that. And then we put a slight chamfer on the inside and the outside of the pipe, which will help with the flaring process later. So let's just go and have a look at that and just make sure everything's square and clean and tickety-boo. Now this important bit of kit, this is the flaring bar, and if you look closely, you'll see it has the diameters of the different pipes stamped upon it. Now I know that this is 
3 16 pipe and this side we use when we actually form the flares on the end of the pipe but to begin with we can use this side the flat side just to make sure that the end of the pipe here is perfectly true so let's pop this in the vise and we'll have a quick look at doing that now for now i've just put it in there and i'll just file across there just to make sure that it's all perfectly square this obviously comes apart with these big wing nuts so you just file across and then that way you will know that this is perfectly perfectly flat that's good so the next thing to do is to chamfer the inside and the outside the inside and the outside of the pipe at this end now to do the inside we grab our trusty Stanley knife other brands are available I imagine we'll literally clean the go around the, the inside like that and that gently ideally you do this upside down then you won't get any debris going into the pipe but you can blow the pipe through later with some compressed air so you just do that and that just introduces a little bit of a flare on the inside of the pipe in there I'm not talking huge amounts here right so that's the inside done now we will go and find a file or two and we will just gently chamfer the outside of the pipe just a little, just to help make the flare when we get to that stage. So let's go and find the file. Well, there's the end of the pipe that's prepared for flaring, hopefully. Now, as I say, I was going to practice on the scrap piece over there, but I ended up picking up by mistake the piece, the length of copper tubing that I'm actually going to use. So I might as well just give it a crack. Now, the easy thing to forget to do here is to thread on the the union the fitting itself before you put the flare on because if you put the flare on you're not going to get that on okay well next thing to do is choose the correct adapter for the size of pipe that you're working with and this is 3 16 so i have dug out the 3 16 adapter might just be able to read that on there i'm not sure but anyway that's the 3 16 adapter and the pipe i've turned the bar around now the pipe is in the slot so we slacken that and that needs to protrude the depth of this adapter the, the main chunk of this adapter so we we jiggle this down and that has to stick up the same amount as the depth of the adapter and we nip it up so that is the right depth now. That's sticking up the right amount through the bar. So the next step is to turn the adapter around, pop it inside the pipe. Now this is the yoke assembly. We use this to form the double flare. You form one part of the flare to begin with and the second part afterwards using the same tool. The first time utilizes the adapter, the second time does not. So now we get this, let's just wind it off. So last time I did one of these, it was on the 1952 Morris Minor. One of the rear brake pipes was shot on that when I was recommissioning it. So I had to make up a new one. That's when I bought this particular flaring tool. So this needs to come a little bit higher just to clear the adapter. And that will push on there. And when you tighten this down, it'll create the first part of the flare but before I'm going to do that it's recommended that you put a drop of brake fluid on the actual pipe itself because that lubricates the action of the adapter as it's pressed into the end of the pipe let's just go and find a drop of that now yeah, we've got a drop of brake fluid here so 
pretty horrible stuff I'm just going to dab of that pop it on the end of there that'll just help things along a little yeah. horrible stuff right so we'll pop the adapter back in we'll just check it double check again that's three sixteenths Ooh, is that in there and then we put this yoke contraption on here and that pokes into there and then we literally tighten the thing up and just get it all square before putting any tension on it at all it's looking like it's all square I mean the worst that can happen is it doesn't work and you just have another go so that's why I always cut a little extra than the amount that you actually need on the pipe because you can always lose the extra in a curve you can always take that into account but if you do it too short or if you do it the exact length to begin with and you make a mistake that piece of pipe is scrap so the next thing to do is gently tighten this up by tightening this it pushes the adapter into the head of the pipe hopefully that's going reasonably well you don't have to go mad on this you know you don't have to really wind it up you just nip it up and then you come off again and that should be the first part of the flare there we go so that's formed part of the flare to create the double flare we get the old yoke again you must be yoking and you plonk it straight in there without the adapter again we'll just nip that up and just make sure everything's looking square right, that's just that's just on there now it's looking about as square as I can see so we'll force this gently Hopefully, we've got a flare on our pipe. Let's whiz that off. And do that. There we have a flare. And to be honest, that's not a very good one. Oh, let's have another go. Take two. So. Like I said, we need to make sure this is sticking up the same depth as the adapter. Just get down here. Now last time it didn't have quite enough meat on it, so I'm just going to go ever so slightly over. Not much. Right spot on so we nip it up at this end first and then this one put a drop of uh, brake fluid on again just to help lubricate things a little bit I've re-chamfered the end of this inside and out as I did before so I'll have another go and see if it works this time. And there's part one. Closer look at that. So there's the first part of the flare. Hope you can see that. I'm not sure if this will focus. There we go. There's the part one. It's looking nice and centralised. So let's have a crack at finishing it off and see if it works better this second time.
looks pretty good to me pretty uniform so we'll just make sure that this slides up to okay just wants a little bit of encouragement but that's all right so that's one of the double ended the double flares rather done for this brake pipe so i just need to do this end now go and find the fitting to slide on first we'll chamfer the ends of here make sure it's all square and then get the uh, bar out again and flare the end of the pipe so it's not a super difficult job but you just have to sort of think about it a little bit and it does pay to chamfer the edges off of this first because you get a much better flare as a result so I'm quite pleased with that so uh, let's go and find the old pipe get the fitting off that and finish this one off okay I'll move on to the other end now so I've taken the union or the fitting rather off the other old pipe slid that on before I forget and I've chamfered beveled the end of this pipe ready for flaring so I'll crack on with that same procedure as before use the adapter flare it to the first flare take the adapter off do the second flare and we'll see what we end up with as a result hopefully I won't have to redo it a second time fingers crossed Right, I wondered if anyone could tell me what these are out of. Now these uh, are going to be thrown away by someone we know. And they are clearly liquid containers for hot soup, hot drink, something like that. And clearly they're military. Obviously they've got the directions on the side here before filling jar rinse with hot water to warm the glass lining, etc, etc. Food must be as hot as possible when placed in jar and insulated lid immediately fixed to retain temperature, etc, etc. Lining is made from Pyrex glass and is very strong but will break if handled carelessly. Now it's quite a large, it's quite a, quite a hefty lump. We've got a pair of these. Now I'm assuming they're out of an aircraft. There's no Air Ministry marks on them, but I'm guessing probably 1950s, possibly a V-bomber, something like that. But can anyone tell me what they are out of? One of them is missing its glass lining. This one has it in. If we ping the lid off, and peer inside it's a little bit crusty now but as you can see it's all lined glass lining well insulated and so on I'm just intrigued to know what this would have been used in originally on the top it's got glass just about making out handle with care hello what do you want Are you looking at this can you tell me what this is off so yeah anyway that goes back on there something like that there we go make sure that the little catch is lined up yes i'm talking to myself young lady right and that goes come sir and there we go so i just thought if anyone could shed light on this insulated heat uh, food container i'd be interested to know like i said this channel isn't just about cars even though it is mostly um but occasionally the odd item of aircraft related content does sneak on here for which i apologize let's put that one on it's certainly a hefty thing very well made which makes me think it's sort of some air force type thing but if you can tell me what this was originally used in for sure like I say, i'm guessing something like a vulcan or a victor something of the v-bomber era it's too big i would have thought to be in anything smaller than that like a hawker hunter or something i just don't see it but in a bomber i could well imagine that being tucked away in the back for hot meals soups etc while you're on a long flight so yeah if you could tell me a bit more about this please pop a note in the comments below this video thanks very much that would be really really useful what do you say eh? what do you say <laughs>